Um, I'm quite good on the piano, but I'm not very good at speaking, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about what I do for a living, which is mainly improvising. Um, I looked up the definition of improvising in the dictionary, and it says, for music to create and perform spontaneously or without preparation. And the general definition is to produce or make something from whatever is available, which I quite like that definition more because as a jazz musician, when I'm playing with other musicians, that's really what we're doing all the time. We're listening to each other and throwing ideas around and responding to what's happening to fuel the improvising. Um, now, improvising, <coughs> I think, is, is a completely natural thing that we all do all the time. Um, I think when you see a child go to an instrument, the first thing they'll do is improvise. Especially you know, if they haven't learned any music before, they'll sit down and they'll just start playing. And I think that's such a wonderful thing. And, every, and actually, everyone can improvise. Sometimes I, I speak to people, often classical musicians, who say, oh, no, no, I can't improvise, I can't improvise, and they're terrified. But actually, most of the time, well, in fact, all the time, they find that actually, of course, they can improvise. It's just that in order to enjoy it, they have to put aside their ideas, like the previous speaker was saying, about perfection, not being good enough, and all that sort of stuff. And they often find that there's some lovely music comes out. Um, now, something I've always fascinated me about improvising is that in, in classical music, in our sort of Western classical tradition, um, improvising was really a huge part of being a musician. So all the composers improvised, a lot of the musicians improvised. If they did a concert, they would include improvising as part of it. Um, apparently Liszt um, would go, when he, when he was performing a concert somewhere, he'd go to the, the local opera or theatre and he'd listen to all the themes and the songs that were being performed then and then he'd take those themes and improvise on them in his concerts. Um, there's a great quote from Cherney who was he wrote studies for the piano, he was Beethoven's student, and he said that Beethoven was improvising. His improvisations were most beautiful and striking. In whatever company he might chance to be, he knew how to produce such an effect upon every hearer that frequently not an eye remained dry, and many would break out into loud sobs. Um, now, I, would, I personally would have loved to have seen Bach or Beethoven improvising, I think that would be phenomenal. But what I'd like to just quickly do and demonstrate in the piano is just how, as a jazz musician, how we might improvise on a particular chord sequence or on a song that you might recognise. But I'll start off making it a bit ambiguous. And if you, if, if you do recognise what it is, feel free to, to shout out and I'll stop. <laughs>
for improvising in classical music at the sort of beginning of the 20th century seemed to die out. Um, which, it, I, I, I really, I'm not quite sure why that happened. It could be that in classical music, things got a, a lot more perfectionist and, you know, musicians concentrated solely on performing one composer's work or maybe two or three composers' work and they stopped being all-round musicians as Beethoven would have composed and improvised and performed. Um, and it could have been that was the reason. But then the interesting thing happened is that jazz musicians seemed to take over the job of improvising and so it carried on <coughs> and we have the whole history of jazz which is really what attracted me in the first place. Um, I just I, I just loved the fact that there, there were people playing stuff that they didn't know what they were going to play. It was it was crafting the unexpected and for, for me the jazz side of it that also appealed to me was the, the African rhythms and the feel and the sort of combination of those two things um, completely got me hooked. Um, people like John Coltrane, Herbie Hancock, Errol Garner, Keith Jarrett, um, and also Wayne Shorter, who's a great saxophone player, who I was fortunate enough to actually end up working with for a while. Um, and I just loved what they did with music. Um, and this whole improvising thing completely appealed to me. I, I did actually used to improvise before I discovered all of this, without really knowing what I was doing. Um, now, I have taught jazz piano probably for about 25 years now, and you might think, well, how can you teach improvising? I mean, it's, it's supposed to be spontaneous music, how do you teach that? And then the answer really is, is that improvising with music is very much like improvising in anything else. For instance, having a conversation with someone is improvising. But in order to communicate your ideas, you do need some kind of language and grammar, which is what, for the jazz improviser, is learning the scales, you know, learning the chords, learning what things work, when, where, and then the idea is that when you actually come to perform, you forget about all that stuff. So, just as in when you have a conversation, you're not sitting thinking at the beginning of the conversation, well, I, you know, I want to go here, and then after he's answered that bit there, I should do this answer. It, it just comes out spontaneously. And that's exactly what we're trying to, um, sort of the state of mind we're trying to be in as improvisers with music is to be in exactly that same place where you really are open, you don't have an idea of where you want to go, and you just follow where it does go. And one of the things, apart from teaching the nuts and bolts of it, one of the things I find fascinating is that the thing that holds us back or stops the improvising being good is very much, um, in, in a word, is really thinking too much. It's judging what's coming out and deciding, oh, this isn't good, or I should do more of this, or it's all that sort of interfering with your natural musicality that actually stops the improvising being good. And sometimes when I'm teaching, sometimes I feel my job is just to say, no, listen, actually, what you have musically is fantastic. It's just that you're not allowing it to, to come out and you're stifling yourself. And I've, I've often seen people, with that encouragement, actually sit down and improvise again and be completely lost in it. And as soon as they're lost in it, I find I'm lost in it too. And it really is a wonderful experience. So I think um, one of the sort of benefits of, of, of this skill, if you like, of, of being vulnerable and allowing something that you don't really necessarily understand to come out. I think one of the advantages of that is that it does give you confidence and faith in yourself. Um, I did a very funny story actually, it was in fact in the jazz factory and I was teaching this chap who played saxophone and he hadn't really played that much. He loved it and we'd sort of practiced for a few weeks and after about, I think it was about six weeks we had a concert 
and he did the concert and it, and it went really well. But he came up afterwards to me, he said, he said, I was in the Air Force and I was a fighter pilot. He said, I, I, I've been shot at many times by people wanting to kill me, but I've never been as scared as I was standing up there playing jazz saxophone, which I thought was, was wonderful. Um, well, obviously not wonderful, but not scared. <laughs> Um, so, just, it just sort of shows how that if you can overcome that fear of, I'm not sure what I'm doing, um, some great things can come from it. And my favourite improvisers are the ones that are constantly not trying to impress you or not trying to be clever, or, but are constantly just being open and letting. It's a very child, sort of childlike innocence come out. And I think when you hear that, it's, it's a lovely thing. Um, I'm also um, aware that improvising and music generally can be very therapeutic for people. Um, I once met a, a very sort of severely autistic um, youngster who actually played jazz. And he was very, he, he was very difficult. He couldn't really communicate verbally. He had no real social sort of skills and interaction skills. But we sat and played jazz together and we communicated. Um, and it was fantastic, you know, and it was just lovely that he'd found or that there was a way for him to communicate that didn't require um, you know the normal sort of social skills and that most of us have, but some people don't. So it was um, Fantastic. Um, I do teach a bit you know, young kids. I have the, the project called the Jazz Rainbow Project, and we go to primary schools and sometimes secondary schools, um, and we get kids to come and improvise. And it's you know most of the time it's very positive, and you definitely see people coming out of themselves and um, starting to realise that actually, wow, there's there's quite a lot of creativity in here if I just allow it to come out. And that's lovely when someone realises that they have something really nice to contribute to the musical world and the world at large. Um, so that's really um, all I have to say, except that if um, you do get a chance to support improvised music, um, please do go along, go and see a jazz gig or a classical improvised gig. Um, there's definitely a sort of really nice atmosphere about that sort of quality of unexpectedness at these sort of events. So um, that'd be great. I thought I'd just play, I'd just completely improvise with no agenda to finish off my talk. So thank you very much. Yeah.